Race number five at Ascot, it's over the 1200 metres. Some nice types of zooming here in this three-year-old company. But Mark, we have a proven form line now that is held up on Saturday. Yeah, we do indeed, Adam. The one you mentioned is Ayana, of course. Beat uh, Hoboken in a maiden at Northam. Hoboken since come out and won on a Saturday. Very nice odds as well. Let's have a look at that win at Northam, beating Hoboken by a length. They're being followed by Viamo, who's having to be ridden along. Coming into the clear then is Orange Strudel and further back, super fine. At the 300 though, and he has to go to work on Hoboken as Ayana sticks with it. And at the 200, he's got a fight on his hands. And it might be all in vain. As Ayana reaches the lead, Hoboken tries to rally. It's Ayana the outside in front and responding well, defeating Hoboken. Ayana too good, Hoboken second, tight go third. Really nice performance on, on this occasion. Of course, Hoboken was a favourite in that race and uh, Ayana was able to just sit on the outside. And you probably thought Hoboken was going to kick away and get the job done, but this filly by Musket, she fought all the way to the line and was able to get the job done. Now, we see that Hoboken's come out and won a Saturday race since, and I know that that means all of a sudden we should pay a bit of interest, but I still question this form line dramatically. I think Hoboken just put in the perfect run on the weekend, to be honest. Uh, from there, you know, it's still been a beaten favourite at two dollars so i go into it with a little bit of nerve especially because there are some nice types i'm incredible with elega zoom form lines paris texas certainly on the up and even a horse like oregon bronze which has the sandalwood and elegant blast form lines i think they can hold up but it can definitely win there's no doubt about it number seven there paris texas from the lindsay smith yard and of course those famous scales of justice colors group one winning colors now adam it won nicely last start at bunbury and two starts ago in the placid arc was not disgraced beaten three lengths by kaiparinha really like this horse it's been one that i've been following since its debut run and finally got the win last start by one and a half lengths it was uh, backed in on that occasion jumped at about two dollars forty the start before that the run was good over well beaten three lengths over the 1200 meters i'd rather see this horse at 1400 but i still think it's got the class to win this race. Adam, we've also got in the race Oregon Bronze. I was really taken by the trial recently. It just uh, streaked away from them. I thought it was a really good trial performance. Now, I know that the teams had a pretty good opinion of this galloper when we go back to that first prep with the runners I mentioned behind Sandalwood and also Elegant Blast, even behind Verve de Vega. You look at the odds it was jumping at, $5.50, $5 around the mark as well. So they were always pretty confident. The recent trial was good. It was a slow time, but they walked through the early stages, showed a nice turn of foot. Should get a really nice run from Barrier 7, I think, and it be some each way odds. But I'm going to go with Paris, Texas from I'm Incredible, Oregon Bronze, and then number eight, AR. Eight on top for me, A Arna with those proven recent Saturday form lines. Ahead of number seven, Paris, Texas. Ten, Oregon Bronze. And three, I Am Incredible. Race number six at Ascot, it is over the 1,500 metres, the Class 3 handicap, and Mark, there was one that was very impressive first up. It was indeed. It was a Cerise and White runner, Bob and Sandra Peters. Royal Attraction, let's have a look at this Mayor Borodut's choice winning first up. Rogue who's made that sustained run, Vintrus of the Rail, Royal Attraction behind those, followed by Source of Survival. At the 200, though, Regal Rogue tackled by Royal Attraction. Royal Attraction went to Regal Rogue, headed it off, got about a half a length in front, is doing too well, and comes away from the Royal Attraction, a treble for Pike Beak Regal. She was backed in late on course here and uh, it still ended up jumping at a nice price of $7, which you don't see for a Cerise and White runner. However, she raced exactly like one of them, winning by two lengths on that occasion against Regal Rogue, which does have some good form lines as well. I think this race just suits even more. Has one second up before, now one at the track and distance, drawn perfectly in barrier six. There's no doubt about it, she's the one to beat. There's a couple others we'll touch on, Adam. The first of them is Fremont from the Neville Parnham Yard. Now, a big class dropper here, 72 plus into this really very moderate uh, class three event aside from royal attraction but looks to be well in this it's one where you can probably just try and predict the future and get a price here because you wouldn't be surprised to see Fremont come out and win but when you take a look at the form lines and see it hasn't won for 375 days and the runs haven't been great you still have to be a little bit nervous but I'm with you I think it's going to improve dramatically in this race it is a very weak assignment compared to what we've seen recently Chris Parnham on board barrier two I think it can certainly turn its form around number three there four letter word for Jared Noski riding for the Ganjimi yard now obviously well bred. Adam, what did you make of the run at Northern last start? Although it was quite good carrying the 59 kilos from Barrier 12 had to do more work than they would have liked. There's a lot of positives here as well. Barrier 3, 57 kilos. Stepping up to the 1500 I think will really uh, favour this galloper. There's good speed in the race as well. So I think you'll see this horse attacking the line strongly. Still is, uh, you know, only having its fourth start so there's a lot of improvement to go but I think the team will be pretty happy with what they've seen so far. But Mark, I'm going to go with our replay horse, Royal Attraction. From number 10, Persian Princess. Number 3, Four letter word and seven beyond to love. Royal attraction on top for me, Adam the five, ahead of four, which is Fremond, three four letter word and seven beyond to love.
Race number seven at Ascot, it is a class one handicap over the 1200 metres and Mark again another intriguing race because we have some Saturday form lines, a horse uh, that's on the up in Arch Tycoon with William Pike taking the board and then of course a horse that won by five lengths on debut which we haven't seen trials so there's a few with a bit of interest in this race. There is indeed Adam, Night Watchman uh, out of the Dan Morton stable though, Sarah Bonner takes off three kilos, another interesting little dimension to the race. Let's have a look at its last start which was on the 3rd of December where it ran second behind Where's Wally. Rich Red cornered first, tackled immediately at the top of the straight by Night Watchman. Night Watchman coming at Rich Red, they've booted clear by two lengths. Here comes Where's Wally though. He's down the outside with his runner at the 200. Night Watchman tackled by Where's Wally. Where's Wally on the outside from Night Watchman going with him. Where's Wally wanting to roll and he stopped riding, picked him up. Where's Wally? Night Watchman went to the line. Where's Wally? Where's... Well, these are the Saturday form lines that we were talking about when you take a look at the run. A winner at Belmont on a Saturday on the 6th of August. Nice run uh, behind Rich Red before that. And then that last up behind Where's Wally, which we've seen those form lines really hold up. You add the three kilo claim to Sarah Bonner, 57 kilos, barrier five, first up. We've seen the success that the Dan Morton Sable have had without the trials. Dendee getting the job done uh, in nice uh, fashion there as well. Dainty Tess racing well, uh, fresh. So two big positives there. I think uh, he can certainly run a race. Yeah, the one you mentioned at the top there, winning impressively on debut out of the Neville Parnham Yard. A radiant girl, this mare by tickets, uh, very lightly race so Neville's taking his time with this one and wasn't she great at Pinjarra on debut? $21 and won by five lands. Absolutely blitzed him. I've been waiting for this horse to come back. I'm intrigued to see uh, what has uh, taken so long. Been eight months since we saw it race. No trial here. You don't see Neville Parnham do that. He knows what he's got here. They've got a very nice type. I think from barrier one it would get the gun run and be very hard to beat. Adam, we've also got here Arch Tycoon, the one you mentioned up the top there. William Pike takes the ride here. This gelding by Written Tycoon. Now, Adam, it came from Victoria and then it had its first start in Esperance, was given a break, trialled and its first two runs, uh, this preparation have been outstanding. Yeah, been absolutely brilliant only beaten a long neck by Galaxy Star and then under a length by Ominous Warning with no disrespect to Renee Forrest, but William Pike's a better jockey by everyone by about three lengths so this horse is going to improve dramatically Barrier 9, you can just see it attacking the line strongly, I think it's going to run uh, a very big race and be hard to beat, but I'm going to go with 9 Radiant Girl, a very impressive win on debut from number 6 Arch Tycoon, one night watchman and four well-spoken man. I've got the one on top, Night Watchman here, ahead of the six, Arch Tycoon, two, Tomahawk, and number nine, Radiant Girl. Race number eight at Ascot is the Class 1 handicap over the 1,800 metres. And we finished with a pretty nice race here, Mark, because I think we'd expect to see horses like Bow Count, Major Detail, Loan Choice, even a Peggy Sue went up and running running on Saturdays. Yeah, hopefully we see a bit of improvement out of the likes of Bow Count, as you mentioned, uh, a horse with a lot of ability. But, Adam, our replay horse is number four, Major Detail. Was very good last start at Ascot when being beaten two lengths by Astronomy. Homeward bound at the 300. Excellently again goes to a clear lead. Pike goes to work on Astronomite. Jazz Para comes down the outside. There's a run for pre-selection. Jazz Para, Astronomite head and head at the 100. Jazz Para on the outside, coming back, Astronomite. Astronomite regains the lead. And... Well, the ex Cerise and White Runner is just starting to show some really nice form. This four-year-old attacking the line strongly there. Only been beaten two lengths by uh, Venus Ebony first up and then Astronomite, as you saw there in the replay. Goes up from 54 to 58 kilos here and drawn wide in barrier 11. But I think the step up to the 1,800 metres is ideal. And this is a very weak midweek race for where this horse has been going. I expected to win this race. Yeah, it opened up a nice each way odds with uh, some... Uh betting markets as well so you might get a price on the day which is uh, which is very very handy. Adam we've also got in there where's the same colours loan choice out of the Sharon Milliard of course the colours of our chairman Neil Pinner. Jerry Noski takes the ride on this one. Out to 1800 metres that suits? I'm not sure. Not mm. sure with this horse at all. I know that they've had a decent opinion of the Galloper, but I've just really struggled with it. It's always been well backed. The win that, that it had was it against a very average bunch, and ever since then they've sort of just kept this horse safe and kept it under the $10 mark. Even taking a look at some of those runs, $7 uh, when it was beaten, well, it was 10 to 10 at Bunbury. It just hasn't really impressed me alone, Choice. I've been waiting for it to put in some really nice performances. They've raced on Saturdays with it as well. For mine, it just one of those horses going around. Another which will suit getting out to 1,800 metres is number two, Regal Rogue. Now, this Galloper, by new approach, they get over ground and 1,600 out to 1,800, or 1,500 rather, out to 1,800 should suit. I think it's a really big positive here, and the uh, other positive is just the way that this race is going to map out. Uh, it can just work into the race nicely, attack the line strongly. I think it's uh, a Galloper that you'd expect she's just going to continue 
keen to tick along, and she can definitely win this race. Adam, your on top selection? I'll go with four major detail from one bow count, two Regal Rogue, and eight Dane Hill's daughter. I've got the four on top as well, Adam. Major detail from the two Regal Rogue, number 10 Peggy Sue, and the eight Dane Hill's daughter. Time now to turn our attention to the best bets of the card, and I'm going to go with race two, number four, Paris Dream for the new stable, and race six, number five, Royal Attraction. Adam, I'm going race four, number seven, Prime Witness, and race five, number eight, Ayana. As we always do say, follow us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and make sure you do visit perthracing.com.au. Of course, the Perth Cup still coming up at later this month. You can get your tickets and packages through the website there, and the staff will be happy to help you out. On behalf of both of us, hope we found you plenty of winners. Quick, it's on, Jeff, quickly, quickly.